Robinson, the athletic. Ryan, it seems like, obviously, with Travion back in run games, he took a big step forward the last two weeks. It seems like the off the line's blocking better. Y'all, have you seen that on the film, too? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. But like you said, it um, it makes a big difference when, when Trey's back there and, and we get him to the second level. I thought we got him to the second level quite a bit on Saturday. And um, he was able to you know, really get to the safeties. And, and um, he was physical on a couple runs. And he was able to make a couple guys miss. And um, you know, so I thought, again, we were more efficient in the second half there. But um, you know, there was a couple things that got us off schedule, certainly the you know the sack was something that uh, we did not expect um and so um you know puts us in a really tough situation there um but again you know the efficiency uh certainly starts with the offensive line i think you saw some of that again i think you're seeing steps forward and trey is a big part of that uh front row dave biddle 24 7 sports ryan jermaine matthews played as much as he is um i know he was a big time recruit enrolled early but are you kind of surprised how far along he is at this point when we recruited Jermaine, we felt like this was a very competitive player. We had him in camp, and at camp, it was a really hot day out there, and he he competed the whole day and just kept going and going. Usually, guys, and, and at the time, we hadn't offered him, and he was fighting for a scholarship. He was just hungry. You could see it. And then when he got in here, you saw the same thing. I mean, once the competition started, he was at his best. So um, you just never know till you get him into those situations, but it seems like the bigger – the, the stage, the more he likes it. And he is, you know, nowhere near a finished product, but the competitiveness and the physicality uh, is there. You know, he's been challenged having to step up to be a starter. You know, he's responded to that. And, and now, you know, that he's put a couple of games on film, he's going to have to now continue that and show consistency. I want to ask about another true freshman real quick. I know you have depth issues at tight end. Any plans on using Jelani Thurman maybe a little bit? Yeah. Um, you know, we're trying to build as much depth as we can in that room. I thought that G and Pat both stepped up in a big way. Um, but, um, yeah, you know, Jelani has an opportunity every day to show that, you know, he can be counted on in a game. And, and you, know, you, you know, he was he was ready to go in the game if needed. And so um, we'll keep pushing him to get better. We think he has a tremendous skill set and he has a very bright future ahead of him. Um, so, you know, we're all in on him. Um, so he's, you know, the tight end. As we, we talked about before, the tight end position is a developmental position. There's a lot there. Yep. Uh, Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Ryan, you said uh, after the game with the, 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 the punt and, and when Jesse took off running, there was a miscommunication that happened there. And yeah. you, now that you've had some time to, to look back on it, what, what's, what, what led up to that? Well, the, the, the ball should have been punted. Um, you know, it never should have been run in that situation. So uh, ultimately, I'm the head coach, and so it comes back on me. But it needs to be communicated better, and you know it's unacceptable. Any, any way the communication happens, where it's a miscommunication, miscommunication like that? I just think the communication has to be clearer. You know, um, when you, you know, make it too gray, you know, you just, um, you know, you make it hard on the player, and you know, um, no excuse. You know, Jesse needs to punt the ball, but I think as coaches we can be clearer in exactly what we want on a play. Um, I guess continuing on that that subject, uh, you know, this is going back to last season. Obviously, you had two situations last year. You had called punts, punt fakes against Michigan, against Georgia, and they're not lined up right. They're not communicated right there. So, what what happened in the off season that even despite those issues, you decided to extend Parker? He got a raise, like, and and continue what is also sort of an, an imbalance in the coaching staff between offensive and defensive coaches. Well. You know, I, I, I watch Parker every day, and I, and I see the way he coaches, and I think he's a great teacher and a great coach. And, um, you know, I can just tell you that, you know, he, he works as hard as anybody in the building. Um, but, you know, we're all being evaluated every single time we're out there. And, you know, it's everybody that's involved in special teams. You know, it's not just the coordinator, although he's ultimately in, in charge, and I'm ultimately in charge. So we, you, you can put it back on me. But, um but clearly, you know, we, we've, you know, everybody who's in charge of special teams, because there's a lot of coaches that are involved with that, you know, in the meetings, um, can all do a better job. And, and so, you know, we'll just keep pushing to, to make it better. But, you know, we, we know what the expectation is. Uh, changing subjects. Um, it seems to be like this, this dichotomy right now between being pretty excited about the way the offense has looked in the second halves of games, but not so much in the first half. I and mean, where, where is your kind of balance of thought right now between 
uh, being encouraged by what you're seeing in the second halves, but also maybe wondering when the first half is going to lead you too big of a hole to, to pull out of. I felt like there was some good individual performances when you put the film on 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 Saturday. Um, but, you know, you, you still want to see more overall just drives finish. And so the encouraging thing was we had more guys grayed out. That was good. Um, we just, you know, didn't didn't, you know, complete enough drives there and, and, and finish with points in the first half. So, um, again, there, there are definitely signs that we're moving in the right direction, but, you know, it's, it's getting late in the season. So our urgency is at an all-time high. Doug Lamarie, Kings of Columbus. Another special teams question. You did, in 2020, you did make a, a coaching adjustment in the midst of the season um, when a side wasn't performing up to snuff. Have you considered that with special teams to do something – in the middle of this season? No, no, I, I think, um, you know, we're going to stay where we are right now. You know, I, I feel, again, I'm, I'm there every day. I'm watching how things are taught. And, you know, we all need to be a part of it, you know, as a coaching staff. Um, you know, if I felt there was something that was not being taught right or done right, then um, I certainly would intercede. But, but I'm in those meetings. I, I see what goes on. And so, you know, we just need to do a better job. But, um, like anything, you know, we'll continue to evaluate it and make sure that we're doing what's best for the players. And um, a handful of plays last week during the season when you've had two running backs on the field, we know Chip is sort of like a fullback sometimes in those situations, but what does it give you every now and then when you, you maybe have Travion and Chip out there together? What does that do to the defense? Well, it gives you two ball carriers, and when that happens um, – they have to at least defend you a little bit differently. There's different schemes that um, you, know, you have to defend, and you know both of those guys bring a different um, you know skill package to the table. And, and you know when you're in three wide receivers with one tight end, they defend you a certain way. When you bring in another running back, it's just the spacing's different, the schemes are different, the angles are different. And sometimes when you can change that up, it opens up things in other areas, you know, so a team isn't just focused on one personnel grouping or one scheme. And so to mix those things in is is healthy. Now, you have to be efficient with it, you know, and you have to figure out where you want to spend your time to get really good. But both of those guys give us something on the field at the same time. Austin Ward, the podcast, rival. Ryan, I'm wondering if there's been any sort of like philosophical change with the way that you all manage the injuries. Uh, in that, like, Emeka could go, held him out. Cade, emergency, held him out, Travion. Uh, I know that the training staff is ultimately going to make that decision. It, it's not all in your hands. But is there anything to that that maybe after last year, or maybe not with Jackson, I don't know, that you want guys healthier at the end of the year and you're more willing to play a patient game than you might have been in the past? Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that, that's exactly it. I don't think it really has much to do with last year. I think in the in the, the situations that you're talking about, you're talking about guys who will do anything to get back on the field. I just think those are two very unique situations, and you know both guys are available and just like coach, I'm I'm ready to go into the game, and and we identify and say, yeah, you could probably an emergency role, and and you know you are available in case something happens, but um, you're not at 100, percent and so. Um, you know, it's the training staff's job to make that decision, and then for me, hey, listen, he's not where he needs to be. Um, if he needed to play 10 to 15 to 20 plays, he could do that. But certainly in the long run, it'd be better off if he didn't. That's the, that's the conversation. And so, um, you know, every situation is unique. And, and that's why, you know, I just I lean to the, to the doctors and I lean to the sports medicine folks that give me that advice. What's the, so what's the calculus for you? If, if that's the information that's presented and it's 10 to 15, are you just – is it the score of the game? Is it the opponent you're playing that week? I mean, maybe all the, it's all of that. All the above, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, every week you're trying to figure out, okay, how do you win this game? And then how does it affect the rest of the season? And you do everything you possibly can to put your guys in that position. And um, all of those things come into play. Clay Hall from the SYX. Um, might have some news from the Big Ten tomorrow. I know you're probably not going to comment on that, but I just noticed an email this morning that you can now bet on a celebrity boxing match between you and the guy who coaches up north. <laughs> are, are you in a good mood, by the way? Yeah, I mean, I, I 
I get it, Clay. I know that it's the topic of conversation right now. But you say yeah. you're going to whoop this guy. I'm just curious if you've ever been in the ring, ever sparred. I appreciate you, Clay. I'm not going to say anything. I get I get commented on when I say no comment, so I'm not going to say anything. Tom Perry, WBNS. Um, you've said the number one goal is obviously to win. This time of the year, how hard is it, though, to win these games? Well, I think it, it goes to your discipline. It goes to your consistency. It goes to your leadership. It goes to your maturity to understand what it takes Um you know, nobody's entitled to winning. And you know, we win a lot of games around here, but it's because of the hard work of the players on the field. And it's it's the week. It's, you know, getting their body up to where it needs to be. That, that This time of year, that's not easy to do. I mean, these guys, they're, they're putting it on the line. They're preparing their bodies, you know, whether it's the ice baths, whether it's the treatment, you know, eating right, hydrating, sleep. I mean, that, that's a lot. To, to you know this run that we're on, getting their mind right, preparing every week is a different opponent, um, and then and then obviously getting your spirit and soul ready to go put it on the line every Saturday. You don't just show up in football and play. I mean you got to put it on the line, and so every week it's you know you build up that fuel tank and you just let it all out in the field, and then you come back and you try to figure out how to get that thing loaded up the most you possibly can to go do it again, and that's going to be the same thing Saturday night. You know, I give uh, you know, Coach uh, Barnett a lot, a lot of credit for how he's, you know, handled himself and, and certainly in a tough spit situation. They came back and won a game last week. And so, you know, like you said, this time of year when you're playing in the Big Ten, you got to bring it. And, you know, you see it every single week. So, you know, those are the things that we focus on is every week trying to be consistent. And then hopefully that consistency over time builds momentum and that it pays off down the road. Your guys handled the number one ranking. I know you want to be number one at the end of the year, but you know they throw that on you now. You have that moniker. I think you have so many guys on our team that have just kind of been through all of this before, and they know it means absolutely nothing. And their goal is to win the whole thing and to be the number one team at the end of the year. So, um, you know, we want to win them all, and that's all that matters. And so, at the, at the end, you know, they'll rank us, but. We're just going to try to win them all, and, and you know, it, it continues this Saturday. Uh, far left, Joe Nugent, WCMH. Uh, big win by the Houston Texans, another great job by CJ. What do you think of the success that he's having as a rookie this year? Well, I think he deserves all the success that he's receiving. Um, you know, this is somebody who, you know, went through kind of a tough time during the draft process, you know, and, and really um, you know, a lot of people kind of questioned him in certain ways, and um, you never saw him react anyway. I thought he's handled himself like a pro. Um, the guys on that team, I think they voted him captain, right? I mean, he's a captain there for a rookie right out of the gate is tremendous. You know, he walked in and endeared himself to that organization. And, and now you're starting to see him perform on the field. And he's given that, that organization hope. And you're seeing it. You know, I think it's the same thing Garrett Wilson did with the New York Jets last year. He gave them hope. You know, I think our guys understand what the expectation is is that you know you're, you're you're there to win every game and and so it was great to see him you know quickly jump into that role and have the success he's had and um, still a lot of football ahead of him though Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. when you go back and look at Kyle's performance on Saturday just what did you like about what he did and then were there things that maybe he wasn't seeing down the field that he maybe missed that you guys went over uh, nothing down the field no I mean they were in a pretty high, too high shell the entire game. So there wasn't much down the field. Safeties were 20 to 25 yards deep on both sides for the majority of the time. And um, certainly the, the interception on the, the two-minute drill, you know, the ball needs to be layered better. Uh, that was the Will linebacker who made that play, and so uh, he knows that. Um, but I thought he was efficient. I thought he checked the ball down when, you know, if they're saying you're not going to throw the ball down the field, you have to be willing to take the check down. You know, and a good example of that was in the first drive. Um, you know, they, they put a cover two on it. He checked the ball down to Omeka, nice and easy, simple football, 10-yard gain, and we keep moving the chains. And, and that's, that's what you have to be willing to do is identify what you're getting and then make the right read. So um, there was some of that. You know, even the check down to Travion was, was well done. You know, the timing was right. So, um, 
you know, I think we could have done a little bit better job of helping them on a couple of the things. You know, we could have thrown it better, caught it better. Um, but, you know, if it wasn't for the interception, he would have graded out a champion. Um, I thought overall he graded out well, but anytime you throw an interception and turn the ball over, you're not going to be graded out that way. So, again, um, I thought there was progress made. He started off well, had a bunch of completions in a row. That was good. Something that, you know, we've been focused on trying to get into a rhythm early in the game. So um, some good, some real good there. And, and, you know, he's got to take the next step here again this week. Uh, Andy Backstrom, Letterman Row. Ryan might have been your best day in the red zone as far as efficiency. Uh, I know at times we talk about how it's just mainly execution more than anything, but what did you see from the red zone? Well, I thought there was precision down there, like you're saying. I think the throw, I forget what yard line we were um, with G, but the, the throw and catch was tremendous. And then the, the, the couple throws that Kyle made to Marvin were really well done as, as well. I mean, Highly um, high efficiency there, and then uh, the run game. I mean, we were we were running downhill on a couple of those, and you know every yard is worth two, and we got vertical on those, and um, you know just overall ran the ball better and had more efficiency in the pass game. How is Devin doing his recovery? Process? Yeah, yeah, good, good. Hopefully, have a, a full week this week and uh, be available. He was available on Saturday, so that was good, but. Another week of, of not playing uh, certainly allows him to heal more, even more. So um, he'll be getting close to 100% here soon. Pat Murphy, 24 7 Sports. <clears throat> Ryan, I wanted to clarify on the, the fake punt. Was it called a fake punt and Jesse just saw something and ran? Is that, was that the situation? No, no. I mean, you know, you have a rollout punt, you know, and, you know, there, there are certain times where if, if, you know, nobody's out in front of you, you can take it. Um, and, you know, we usually roll it to our right, we rolled it to our left in that spot. And so there was an overload to, to the right. And so, you know, the decision we just made too quickly and, you know, they were able to rally to it. And so once you, once you get the ball in that spot, we want the ball punted. Um, yeah. Following up on Kyle, we've seen him have some really good stretches in games and then like 11 for 11 to start. Then he goes one for five, then he comes back and, and plays well at the end. Sometimes it's been first half, second half. When you guys look at Good stretches versus bad stretches. Are you seeing anything, trends or anything for him when it when it's working and when it's clicking, and then maybe when it's not? I think the only thing I can recognize is when his feet are right and his eyes are right. That's when he's at his best. I don't know if I can recognize anything in particular other than that. I think there's been some times earlier in the game where his feet are moving a little bit faster or maybe a little bit slower than the game. But once he's found the rhythm of the game and his feet are in rhythm, that's when he's been at his best. Is there a way to get him that way? earlier in games? Um, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. You know, you try to find things that he's comfortable with, but sometimes, you know, you can't always predict it the right way. And, you know, you have to, you know, uh, continually get more and more experience behind you so that you can get that, that feel for it. But uh, a big part of it is, is during the week, you know, trying to give him those looks so that, uh, and, I, and I thought he did a nice job of that in the game. There was some things that came up where, you know, you're looking for a route down the field. All of a sudden there's just like bodies right there. You find the check down, and that's good football. And it, and it just now you have to be disciplined enough to do that, and you have to be able to execute those things. But um, I thought there was some good decisions made there. And Hope, Eleven Warriors. Ryan, it looked like Tommy hurt his arm at the end of the game. Is he okay? Yeah, um, it was another physical game, and it's like you come out of the game, and you know you go in there and try to identify every what, what happened with everybody. So um, you know we'll keep. You know, trying to get these guys treatment the best we can. That's kind of what I was talking about when it comes to bodies. You know, everyone's kind of this time of year is is struggling. So, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I expect them to be out there today, and and we'll kind of see how the week goes. But um, you know, this time, this kind of this time of year, you're gonna have a lot of guys you know, with bumps and bruises for sure. With Denzel and Leif, and are you expecting to have Ivor Ben back this week? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, you know, I, I think. Um, you know, we're expecting Denzel to have a, a pretty good week of work here. Um, you know, Lathan, I think we're probably going to continue to identify kind of where he's at maybe later in the week. Um, but, yeah, Denzel will be out there today. Tony Herman, Buckeye Huddle. Ryan, with your secondary last year, you guys started five corners and five safeties throughout the year. This year you're already at four corners and I think five safeties. What's been the difference in – keeping that level despite still playing a bunch of guys. Well, I think it, you know, comes down to just the, you know, the recruiting and making sure you have the right guys there, but then also the experience. You know, you think about, you know, where now Jordan is and Denzel and you added IGB into the mix. Uh, Jermaine Matthews is able to step up in a big way though. Um, and, you know, I just think overall we just have more depth than we've had there and just more experience where, 
maybe in the past we were playing young guys, freshmen um, or sophomores that hadn't played a lot. What does it do for your recruiting when you can point and say, we've started freshman quarters each of the last three years? It's big. It's big. It's huge. Yeah. And the response we've got from the recruits has been excellent. You know, they see it. Yeah, they, they, they're looking real close because one thing to say, it's another thing to actually see it. And so we make sure that they, they see it. Uh, far right, half the game, WBNS. Back in the summer, you said you were going to work more with defense and try to, you know, be a CEO a little bit more. Obviously, the offense has kind of been the sticking point this year. What's that been like to maybe not have to worry about the defense at all and be able to just focus on that? Yeah, it's, it's huge. Um, and, you know, Jim and his staff have, have done a great job, you know, Tim and Larry and Perry, um, you know, they've all been a big part of, you know, uh, the day to day. And, you know, it, so it's, it, it's, it's huge as we make this run. Um, but ultimately, you know, I got to make sure everything's in place and, and um, we're going to have all three phases going in the right direction here and be at our best. Kyle, obviously you can coach him up every game, but at some point you're kind of looking for him to take that next step. Is there anything else you can do at this point, or is it just getting him reps in the game and hoping it just kind of breaks out? Oh yeah, yeah. No, you just you keep grinding on it. You keep working at it. Um, yeah, constantly. Yeah. I mean, it's you never, you know, you know, change that part of it. No. I mean, you know, Kyle has been here for a couple of years, but he still hasn't played a ton of football. So the more he gets out there, the more you grind on it, the more you learn, the better off you're going to be. You know, you think about those guys who have been in the NFL for, you know eight, ten years, some guys longer than that, they just have such an advantage over everybody because they've seen it so much. And so the guys who can learn quickly from the quickest from their mistakes are the usually ones that get better the fastest. So, you know, we just we stay after it, just like every position, but certainly quarterback is the one that's most visible. Spencer Holbrook, let me roll. Right, it's not that the offensive line doesn't like, like the other running backs, but it seems like they're the blocking hard since they got back, and you guys, the run game just looks a little cleaner. Have you seen that? And just how much of a difference does just having Trey in there make it look cleaner? It's probably maybe it's a little bit of both there, but I think I mentioned that before. It's everybody involved. It, it's you know, it's the receivers getting in there and digging people out. It's the tight ends and, and you know their blocks. Um, you know, it's the quarterback making sure we get into the right play or possibly reading somebody or, you know, if it's a read or an RPO, making sure that, you know, we're not running into an overload box at times. Um, it's making sure that as coaches we put them into the right play. I mean, it's everybody involved. And But when you're having success, you just believe more. You start to see more of a just a, a confidence, and that's probably what you're recognizing. Tim May on three. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, when you watch a quarterback, do you ever – do you ever step back about this point in the season and kind of in your mind have a chart on how he's progressing? You understand what I'm saying? Because I would think everybody starts out reticent, then they get bold, and then they get bit by being bold, and then they get you know reticent yeah. again and stuff. And is is Kyle kind of on that chart where you want him to be? If you follow my drift of awareness, but also not being stupid with the ball and just you know what I mean? Just do you actually have that in mind? Well, I think yeah. There, there's certain things that you have to learn from, and, and you don't know until you've actually done them. Yeah. You know, you don't know until you've been, you know, stripped. You don't know until you know you you got a zero pressure and you don't have a place to go with the ball. You know, you don't you learn all those things. You try to do the best you can as a as a, as a coach to get out in front of those and, and give them a plan. Um, but ultimately, ultimately, you know, you have to be a problem solver at quarterback and. Um, so we'll see. I mean, there's still so much football left. We're going to keep going at it this week and, um, you know, kind of see where he's at. But it, it is. I mean, it's for everybody. But but for Kyle as well, just that build up of continually getting that experience to go play his best football here down the stretch. Josh Brock had a great thing to say on Saturday. I mean, interesting thing. He said it before. But uh, the the defense's motto is if, if they have an inch to defend, they're going to defend it. Yeah. You've seen these goal line stands and these stands in the red zone. First one, you kind of go, okay, blah, blah, blah. Seems to be a trend here that's favorable for you guys. Do you see that also? And what is the difference do you see in this defense, especially when it gets in the red zone? That it's just jumped out at you. Yeah, I, I, that's something that Jim brought here immediately. You know, um, give us an inch, we'll defend it, and, they, and, and the guys believe in that and they embrace it. So even when a big play breaks out, if we can get them on the ground, that can be a four-point play. And you know, I think of just a big part of it is confidence and belief that the guy next to him, next to me is going to do my job, and if I do my job. And we're all in this thing together. We we can stop these guys. And 
And that's all situational football that we've been screaming all all off season. You know, if you can win in the red zone, like we won in the red zone pretty handily. You know, we uh, scored four touchdowns on offense, and I think stopped them to. I think they were one for four. I think when you do something like that and, and force field goals in that spot, and you're scoring touchdowns on the other side of the ball, those are all four point plays, and and the guys have embraced that. And so, you know, we'll get together Tuesday as our first and second down. We're talking about running the football, you know, winning first down, taking care of the football, explosive plays. Then we come back on Wednesday. It's about third down, short yardage, red zone, goal line, the situations. And I think the guys really have, have understood that and embraced what exactly is going on, the time, the down and distance, the situation in the game. And, um, and those have been huge plays for us. Uh, I know you're not going to comment, but I'm going to ask you anyway. When you see your family's name brought up in situations like what has been going on for the last several mm. weeks, did that, did, does that make you angry? What, what obviously, uh, the, you know, it has been brought to uh, one reporter's attention that, that they, have, they have no evidence of anything like that occurring. But how do you handle all that, that, that tornado that's going on, along with what you're dealing with inside the building? Yeah, I just, you know, right now, all, all you can do is focus on what's, what's important. And what's important right now is, is Michigan State. And so we always say ignore the noise. Um, the noise comes in different ways. Uh, we've talked about how, like, for instance, the defense – you know, they, you know, they've played really well to this point. And, you know, last year took a lot of heat for that. And so, you know, they're getting a lot of positive reinforcement. You have to ignore that noise. You know, like you said, rank number one in the country, that's noise. And there's a lot of other noise out there. And so we, we have to get rid of all that stuff. And the team that can get rid of the distractions and annoy, uh, ignore the noise the most, this time of year gives them their best chance to play their best football. And so, so we're all going to do that, you know, whether it's coaches or players. Thank you. Yeah, uh, one more kind of about related to the injury stuff. I know that you never overlook an opponent, um, but Michigan State and then Minnesota, I mean, your big favorites knows you have a huge game, obviously, at the end. How much do you weigh, I want to make sure these guys are healthy, and I mean, obviously we've got to win the game, but I want to make sure that they're healthy for the game. How do you, how do you kind of weigh that? Is that on your mind now? Yeah, I mean, we, we've talked about how we need to be playing our best at the end of the year, and a big part of that, like you know, we talked about earlier, your body, your mind, your soul, and, and you know, part of it is your body. Um, and so these guys work hard, and, and you know, we'll do everything we can to make sure that they're fresh um, and try to make the best decision. You know, it's one of those things where you can't just say, you know, one thing that covers everybody or covers the whole situation. Um, you know, each guy is a little bit unique. Each situation's unique. What's our depth look like? Those type of things. But our, our guys know how every how important every game is. I mean, this is a very important game. You know, we've got to play well in this game, and so um, that's where the focus is. And um, you know, when you start thinking about anything else, you can get yourself out of whack. And so we won't do that. But we also want to be fresh down the stre down the stretch, like we're talking about. This is down the stretch, but um, we'll evaluate it each week, each situation, the best we can, and make the decision that we think gives us the best chance. And a question about Jordan Hancock. I mean, he's been obviously pretty important given his versatility and plays he's made. Um, is there anything kind of behind the scenes that you have seen, that you saw in him maybe from last year or this year that is responsible for some of the transformation? I think Jordan, two things. One is extremely competitive, extremely competitive. You saw that right when he jumped in um, in the program. Uh, just recognize that part of it. Um, and the second thing is he, he has a tremendous work ethic. I mean, he's in here a lot watching film on his own, um, you know, constantly wearing out Coach Walt. Uh, he, he works hard at it. He's another guy who has a tremendous work ethic uh, and is also very competitive. And then when you combine those two things with his ability, you're starting to see some, some production. And um, that was a big play he had on Saturday for sure. Bill Landis, the podcast. Kings. Uh, you mentioned the sack you guys took in the first half of the game. What, what happened on that play? You know, I, I don't um, – it, it was a unique play. We've never really seen it before. Um, you know, it, it, the, the nickel and the will came at the same time. Um, I don't know if there was a miscommunication on their end or what happened, but it, it, it caught us off guard, and it's not something we were expecting. Um, so I, I don't know exactly how it played out, but the line was going one way, and both guys came. So uh, very unique, but uh, I'm glad that you know Kyle held on to that one because we weren't we weren't um, prepared for that.
And so we made an adjustment to make sure that, you know, moving forward, if that were to get called again, it was executed on defense that way, that we were ready for it. Uh, it didn't happen again. So, um, you know, just I, I, I wrote it off as a one-off. And, and, you know, he held on to the ball. And, um, you know, we just had to move on. And, and would love to see us get half back there, took the flat. You know, but when you take a hit like that that you're not expecting, you can get rattled quick as a quarterback. And so, you know, he had to get his feet back underneath him. And, you know, at the end of the play, we ended up pooching. And I know that's not a great scenario. That's not what we want to be. We want to score points in that spot. But we didn't turn the ball over. And we don't want to lose the ball in third and extra long. So, overall, I thought Kyle in that moment handled himself well. Um, that's, the, that's how that played out. Uh, so maybe this play doesn't – that play doesn't apply technically. But just sort of in general, like – Seeing where you think pressure is going to come from, I know it's yeah. this hard when it's going from depth. Like, how do you think Kyle Carson, the tackles, have all sort of handled that and communicated that this year? I think there's been good times, but there's also things that we got to you know do better. And you know, defenses do a great job of changing up the looks. You know, the minute you think you got them, here comes another twist or another guy coming from another way. And you know, as a coach, it's like, well, if it looks like this, you know, they, they really can't bring that guy, and then all of a sudden they bring him and run a guy over. You know, and so. You have to be able to react. You have to be able to identify what they're doing early in the game. And I remember a coach telling me one time that used to go against, um, you know, Peyton Manning, that you know, early in the game they'd bring something that he hadn't seen before, and the first thing you do is just throw it over his head. They'd punt, and you we weren't going to get him again. But that play wasn't going to ruin the game. And so sometimes, you know, when they get you schematically, you got to take care of the football and just hang in and cut your losses, as opposed to the ball going up in the air and ruining the whole day. We don't want that, but. You know, there's there's some good schemes out there and good coaches, and so, um, you know, there were a couple on Saturday. But then I thought we we settled down a little bit on third down. Well, we did. We 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 did a much better job on third down in the second half. All right, I want to try to get to everybody, but I'm going to have to limit it to one question. Andy Anders, Eleven Warriors. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, you know you mentioned the red zone efficiency on both sides of the ball on Saturday. Obviously, Penn State and you know, third downs, especially on defense, were big. Uh, have you seen a situational improvement from this team as the year has progressed, and what do you think has caused that? Well, it was, it was a big emphasis for us in the offseason. Yeah, if we want to win games, we have to win the situations. Um, big emphasis. We'll go through them, coach them. Now, you know, we'll see down the stretch if it, if it pays off for us. But it's been something that we talk about after every game. We identify each of the situations. Um, you know, there's 12 situations that we want to win. And, um, and then our whole offseason was about competing. And then, you know, if you're competing to win those situations, your chances of winning go, like, way up. And so I think on Saturday we were eight wins, two losses, and two ties. You know, so that's me going to win the game. You know, won the game by 19 points. Now there's some things that we could have done better, and it would have been a different game. But um, if you, you know, like win in the red zone, you know, I think short yardage, we won big. I think we were on offense, we were maybe five for five, and on defense, you know, was really good too. I forget what exactly what it was. Maybe two for two for five. So now you're, you know. You're seven for ten, or something, something like close like that, and so working hard to make sure we win that first down. Explosive plays. I think explosive plays were even, but we we counted Jordan Hancock's as an explosive play, so that made it five four. That was an explosive play. It changed the whole game. So um, now I think our guys get it. You know, I think you see even on the the fourth down play um, where you know they they snapped it and then handed it off to the guy behind, and then. He gets around the edge. I mean, IGB and those guys are fighting like crazy. I mean, we had like five guys sprinting to get them down on the ground because they believe if we get them on the ground, we can play some red zone defense. Those are four-point plays. So uh, I do think there's some awareness there. I think our guys have had some awareness in two-minute. You know, we've you know, had to win a game in a two-minute already this year and um, some things at the end of the half. So um, not perfect by any means, but it's been an emphasis. Dylan Davis, Gilbert Gazette. Talk a lot about competitive stamina. Can you learn as much about your team from a game like this as you would as a big game where everybody's going to get up for it? I guess I know that obviously it's still a big game for you guys, but uh, big favorites at home prime time. Can you learn as much about a team from how they handle this kind of situation as opposed to you know a big game scenario? I think you learn different things. Yeah, but you definitely you're always learning, and I, and I think you've heard me say this before. The issues are always there, whether they get brought to the forefront in a game where it comes down to one play or not. That's our job to identify those as coaches, and so. Uh, you know, I do that with the team, and I know that the coaches do with their with their units. You know, regardless of you know who you're playing, you know the issues are there, and so you have to identify what those issues are that you know need to get fixed, and the things that are going well need to be enhanced. 
So we watch on offense and defense, we watch clips of the good plays, the things we've got to continue to build on, and the plays that, hey, man, like if we don't get this thing fixed, it's going to be a problem down the road. And I think the guys appreciate that, and they know that we're continually working to get better because, you know, as we, if we've learned this year, it can come down to a player too. We certainly know that coming off of last year. Jeremy Birmingham, the podcast. Brian, you guys all year, I think you probably will get, like, haven't played a complete game offensively, and it seems like things ramp up in the second half every week where you are more efficient and maybe a little bit cleaner. You lost Kevin Wilson in the offseason, and it hasn't really been talked about the, the alignment of the staff, who's upstairs, who's on the field. Is there anything to that discussion? Like, you have guys in the box that are relatively inexperienced compared to what Kevin was. Do you guys think about changing that at all, or is there any? Do you attribute the success in the second half to getting a chance to collect those thoughts that happen? You know, I don't know. I, I, you know, I think that one of the things we've tried to do is really establish the run game this year, probably maybe more than last couple of years with CJ. And you know, it it sometimes takes a little time for you to establish the run game. Um, and you know, I think you're starting to see that happen as as you know as the game goes on. You start to see those three yard hits get to four and five, and then you start to see the five and f five and sixes get to you know a little bit more explosive plays, and then it opens up more things in the pass game. Um, but there's no question that we want to be faster. We want to be get we want to be moving out of the gates. We want to be more efficient. We want to score. But you know, part of the run game too is you know making hard threes and fours early on. And so what that forced you to do is you got to be really good on third down. And that, that's, to me, what didn't happen on Saturday. We didn't, we didn't execute on third down in the first half. And um, because if you can convert on those third downs and you can start to wear on, on the run game a little bit, that's when every play gets a little better. Um, so I think it more has to do with you know, being more efficient on third down, especially early, early in the game. Like you don't want to bang your head into the wall. That's happened pretty much every game this season. Is there a point where you say, okay, we tried it, it's not where we wanted in the first half, and let's adjust, or is it just keep plodding along? Well, it's working with the team, right? I mean, that's the first thing you identify is, you know, is it giving you an opportunity to win the game? Now, if all of a sudden, you know, the game changes and, you know, starts to become back and forth or whatever, then you may have to change your philosophy. But you know, we want to make sure that we're doing everything we possibly can to win that game, and then we go from there. You know, if we have to, well, I'm just saying, if we have to come out and just, you know, throw the ball every snap, then we'll do that too. But the balance is what we're looking for, and so we'll just keep grinding on it. Last question, Steve Hellwagen, 24 7 Sports. Yeah, Coach Josh Proctor, I think on the goal line, had back to back tackles on second and third down, and then has the hit for the interception as well. Kind of an unsung hero maybe around so many other guys on that defense. Just uh, what he bring, in, I guess, in those situations, and is he OK after kind of getting a little uh, knocked out there? Yeah, yeah. I, I, um, you know, I think he's going to be ready to roll here. We'll, we'll, we'll keep looking at it. But um, tough player, tough player, um, productive player. Um, been through a lot, been through injuries, been through a few years here. Seen the good, the bad, but he's still here and great out of champion. And that was one heck of a play. You know, he never broke stride. And, you know, that was a big time collision and did a great job of just veering off of him enough not to make contact, you know, with his head. And that's not easy to do when you're going full speed like that. I mean, and you're making, you know, split second decisions and that ball squirts up in the air to, to, to Jordan. That was, that was a huge play in the game. So, yeah, um, you know, we're counting on him to be a guy that we can, um, you know, rely on down the stretch to be a big part of our defense because he's a veteran guy that certainly has a lot of ability. Great. Coach, thank you very much. Thanks, guys.